my name is Manpre Tami, and I'm a researcher and capability leader at Monaki Fenwa Landcare Research. I'm Dr. Sophie Calabretto, and I'm a senior lecturer in applied mathematics at Macquarie University, um, and my research field is fluid mechanics. Oh, I can remember one time going for a promotion and being told I was the most qualified for it, but look, I had children, wouldn't that be better? This chap I was going against only was a single, you know, a single man, he should get the job. I mean, that's just not, it's not allowed anymore. So as a capability leader, um, I, I get to participate and facilitate a lot of these training opportunities for researchers and a lot of women researchers in, in our team. I'm interested in using high performance computing to work out why fluids do the things that they do that we can't understand with pen and paper. I decided I wanted a career in geology and that was it and I was going to do it. And when I did geology, at Sydney Uni in the late 60s, it was a man's field. No women, hardly any women did that. And they were told that if they did geology, the only career for them was teaching. By law, women could not go underground, so they couldn't do the mines. I would say I've had to overcome a lot of barriers due to my gender and stereotypes. Trying to get anything to work on a computer, I often run into lots of problems and talking to specific people, I find that I get a lot of condescension coming back at me straight off the bat. So there's an assumption because I'm a younger woman, I probably don't know what I'm talking about. But what often is apparent sort of pretty soon afterwards is I actually know more than the person I'm talking to and yet they're the people who can solve the problems and have the power to do so. I just wanted to do geology and who says I can't go into the field and um, you had to fight a lot of battles like that and I was probably in the government agency in the early 70s, one of the first women, shall I say, allowed out into the field. How terrible. I've been very lucky to work with a number of great mentors and enablers throughout my career. Having said that, I do believe that stereotypes create barriers, sometimes subconscious ones, where you often turn to people you're more used to seeing for help or leadership. I feel that being visible for women and minorities in, in a largely male-dominated field of informatics can be very useful. I had a boss who agreed I could do it, but equally as well, there was a mining boom on and the government couldn't employ geologists, so they had to let the women go out in the field and we seized on the opportunity to show that we could do it. I learned HPC and coding entirely with help from colleagues and workshops. I have always had a really good mentor who actually used to be my line manager and having someone who understands sort of the modern computational infrastructure needs of someone who works in computational fluid dynamics has been really beneficial. And so, you know, without him sort of putting his neck out to get resources and things, um, there would have been a long time that I wouldn't actually been able to do any research at all. So I was really lucky in that way. I know a lot of people don't have that same kind of relationship with a person who can make things happen for them. tend to say, if I can do it, anyone can, a lot. Um, I feel it's a simple message that cuts across issues of inclusivity, perceived and real barriers, imposter syndrome, and brings everyone to the same level. Representation of women in all areas of science is essential because you never know who might be inspired to take action when they see someone who looks like them doing the things they aspire to. I also think that being relatable is really important. I think what it's really important for people to understand is it's not just women supporting women, we actually need everyone to be supporting women. And what we find is generally in those sort of higher level roles, it tends to be men who dominate. And so it really needs to be about, needs to be about those men in those positions of power supporting women to help women give them visibility and then when there are more women in a particular field then it becomes achievable for everyone else so it's not just about women getting together and patting each other on the back and saying look it's really difficult but you're doing a good job it's about other people coming and actively being good mentors um, and sort of catalysts for change to help women. Women up until the late six, mid 60s were not allowed to work in the public service if they got married 
anecdotally as well, there are no maternity leave arrangements, so most professional women left the field once they had children. You know, I only had male role models, but I think if I had female role models, that would be far more encouraging. So I think, you know, it's, it's really nice to have people at different levels and they can feed off each other. And, you know, I'd like to think that the later career people can actually look at all of the early career and mid career people there and know that, you know, sort of this path that they've paved, it's sort of, it's been worth it. And there are still people following them who want to do good things. I have this incredible memory of, um, as a young geologist at conferences of that being the only woman giving a paper or in the audience. And in my later career, for various reasons, I switched into um, informatics and computing. And I remember in that 10, 12 years ago, standing at a conference at AGU to give a paper. And I went, oh my gosh, there are no women in the audience. And it was like turning the clock back. I couldn't believe it. Succession and career development often seem to be at odds, even though it doesn't make a lot of sense. Early career researchers obviously face a very different issue, which is in finding their place in an ever crowded field, while mid and more so late career researchers face the inevitable question of what is my legacy? In my very naive worldview, perhaps, the two can have the same solution, right? If we can create opportunities for early career researchers to work closely with more established researchers, you can bridge those two issues where you create this um, continuity. I am currently working on the American Geophysical Union Diversity and Inclusion Board uh, to make sure that women of today don't go through some of the little nasties I went through in my <laughs> my youth and even in more recent years. Oh, there's just so much more support if they know where to get it. That is the catch. And maybe some of the more senior women have to make themselves more available to help them. Mentorship should not be taken for granted. So we have to create um, an incentive. I think part of it is just having like a sympathetic ear sometime, but obviously there'll be a lot of similar problems that people have sort of encountered. Um, and hearing about different ways that people have gone about solving those or, you know, different things that they've done, I think would be really beneficial. And just talking to people where the first assumption isn't, you've got no idea what you're talking about, um, is actually really comforting, I think.